So Robert uh, Siegel, the question is, uh, why would we invite the CEO of the American Hospital in Paris to a conversation on healthcare in Africa? <laughs> and um, Robert's a, for, a business leader, uh, ran the GE Health business in, in France before uh, taking on the CEO role and uh, has a very interesting perspective on healthcare generally, but also healthcare in Africa, if you would, please. Yes, thank you, Brian. First of all, uh, I would like to thank the organizer and certainly Thierry de Montbrial for organizing this session. Uh, who can imagine that we will aim at a better world without having better health? It's impossible. So healthcare is certainly a, a founding block of uh, better healthcare. So uh, providing healthcare, if you want to deliver healthcare, uh, whether in France, in the United States, or in Africa, you need basically three things. Basic infrastructure, water, electricity. Then you need healthcare infrastructure, buildings, equipment. And finally, you need human infrastructure, nurses, technicians, and of course, physicians. When you look at Africa today, 47 countries, the situation is of course very diverse. If you look at Maghreb, for instance, uh, there is infrastructure, there is basic infrastructure, and certainly there is healthcare infrastructure. If you look at data regarding the physicians, for instance, and you look at how many physicians you have by 10,000 population, uh, in Maghreb, in Algeria, you have 18 doctors. In Morocco, seven. If you look at South Africa, you are at nine. But now, if you look in between, the situation is not the same. You would be below five, and it can go as low as 0 0.5 physician per 10,000 people in Niger. So there is clearly a problem, a quantitative problem. These progress, however, are there. And uh, yesterday we heard Prime Minister Koulibaly who mentioned that the middle class is going to be 800 million people in 10 years. And this middle class is looking for health care. And in general, again, who can imagine that in all these countries, solid growth and social justice will occur without solid health care. And so in this mood of making progress, I would like to point to two specific domains. The need for quality is number one, and the need for accountability is number two. Need for quality, let me go back to the problem of physicians. Even if you say that in a country you have eight, 10 uh, doctors per 10,000, by the way, for France, we are at 30 for 10,000, in the United States, it's 26. But, so you need to have the good doctors, you need to have specialists, it's not only, there are certain countries in Western Africa, where you have three gastroenterologists for the whole country. So you need to train all those specialists. The second point I would like to, uh, to stress on regarding quality is hospital and healthcare managers. Uh, it's not an issue only for Africa. Believe me, it's an issue where, wherever you are in the world, in France, or as in any other country. You need good hospital managers and this point out, points to my second point, which is accountability. I, there is no shortage, or there are financing and financiers around the world. It can be public, it can be the WHO, it can be the Gates Foundation, so there are money. But all these people are asking the same question, and it can be, of course, private sector, of course. But they're all asking the same question. If I invest one euro, one dollar, whenever, what is the return on investment? Who is accountable for this money? I am ready to put a lot of money, but I want to be sure that there is a return on investment or a value for money, call it whatever you want. So I think that for these two challenges, quality and accountability, technology is an answer. Not the only answer, but it's a very important answer. And let me be a bit more specific. Number one, technology, of course, is completely uh, linked to modern medicine. In any hospital, in any clinic, you need now modern imaging, MR, CT, you need an operating room with, with, with tools that can deliver on, uh, on, on the needs. So this is one. Now I would like to point to information technology. Information technology is transforming our world, maybe at the cost of uh, 
the carbon, as was said before, but it's transforming the world. And uh, it can be used in several ways. One of them is simply organizing digital education. I spoke about the, the need to enforce and enhance the education of physicians. We are organizing in our hospital every year what we call the gastro training, where we train gastroenterologists of Africa in sight. And at the same time, we have a digital uh, uh, link with several countries in Africa where people can watch, participate to this. And there are a myriad of initiatives for this digital education. Now, another point with digital is continuum of care. And this is very important. Today, what I see and what we're discussing in my hospital, we get a lot of patients coming from Africa, but in many cases, sorry, it's too late. As simple as that. We cannot do a good service for these people. So having teleradiology, telemedical conferences is a tool that is able to triage the good patients and to avoid to get patients for which you cannot do anything. And once you treated the patient, you have to follow up on this patient because you can imagine that you need to follow with the local doctors and the local infrastructure, so this is digital uh, uh, information. But you can even think forward, leapfrog, let me just say something concrete about artificial intelligence. We are using today in our hospital artificial intelligence with mammograms to detect women which are at risk for breast cancer. It's used with genetics and it's used with mammography. So today in the Western world, artificial intelligence is a help for the radiologist. But you can imagine that tomorrow in Africa, you have a mobile unit with mammo, no need for a radiologist, and the MAMO is sent to the cloud, a, a, a artificial intelligence program, and is able to detect as simple as that and to point to women which are at risk to, for developing a cancer. So this is becoming real now. It's not just a dream, it's becoming real. And finally, the last point about uh, technology, I come back to accountability, it's data. If you are digital, you have more and more data, you're accumulating data, and we know today that in the real world, in the Western world, accountability now is simply data. It's the fact that you're not just speaking with explaining nice things, you show to controllership data. So if we put and, and develop uh, those digital infrastructure, the accountability and the capacity and the will of the payers to sustain the effort will increase. I will just finish with this point. Uh, in my previous life, uh, uh, industrial life, this, it was an American company, and the company understood at some point that it was not, what was good in America was good for other continents. And there was a lot of efforts which were done for, uh, in, in China, for China, in Asia, in, Af in uh, India, for, in for, uh, for India. We can exactly imagine the same for Africa, in Africa, for Africa. And yesterday, we have President Kagame, which was there, everybody knows the IT success for, of Rwanda. You can perfectly imagine that some solution, local solution, are invented in Africa, and uh, because they are close to the market, to the needs, they are cost effective, and they are good for Africa, but tomorrow, and this was what happened for, in China for China, and in India for India, those, mar those products, which at the beginning were only good for those markets, became good for the entire world. So maybe step one is maybe in Africa for Africa, but step two is why not everywhere in, in, in the future? So, I am optimistic. Awesome. Thank you, Robert.